All right, guys, it's not often I get this excited about something that comes in a plain brown box and doesn't say Republic of Gamers all over it, but this is the OCE 11102NX. This is a direct attach copper, 10 gigabit per second Ethernet adapter, so it has SFP plus connectors on it, two ports, PCI Express, 4X, I believe. Comes with a, some stuff inside. Okay, so what's special about these? These are the least expensive 10 gigabit per second capable adapters that are out there. Well, Linus, why would you care about that? Because, you know, 10 gigabit per second switches are uber expensive. Comes with a low profile adapter. Comes with two low profile adapters. I think one of these ended up, I, I have a few of them. So I, I mean, one of them didn't have one. So I think they just come with one. Um, so yeah, 10 gigabit per second switches are so expensive, Linus. Why could it even matter to me, the consumer, that I can get a 10 gigabit ethernet card for under 300 bucks? Well, the answer I would reply is daisy chaining. These adapters, and there are other ones too. I actually got the wrong ones. I didn't want the SFP plus ones. It was my bad. There's a different part number that can do 10 gigabit per second over CAT6 and CAT6A, which is just regular RJ45 connect. Well, sort of regular. I think they've made some revisions, but the point is much less expensive than direct attached copper cables, which will run anywhere from about 50 to a couple hundred bucks, depending on the length, but they can go up to 40 feet. And uh, right, so there's Cat6, Cat6A ones, there's these SFP Plus ones. Why am I excited about this? Because daisy chaining. So they have two ports on them, which means if you wanted to have sort of a, a here, I drew a little diagram. Where's my little diagram? Ah, yes, this is my plan that I've been working on for a while. So this is my server with the quad gigabit NIC. Okay, so server right there, and then it's sort of one gigabit out to everywhere else from there. Then that server could also have one of these bad boys that I then run regular CAT6 to two other computers, a capture computer and a video editing computer. So I'm gonna show you guys why this is so exciting in just a moment. Sorry guys, baby's sleeping, but uh, here's the config I'm using just for testing. So there's one of the Emulex cards and I've got a direct attached copper cable running down to another Emulex card. So that's a 10 gigabit NIC here. And that's my quad one gigabit NIC here. So this machine right here will have to have some network configuration done to allow this network to talk to this network so that these computers can all talk to this at one gig and these computers can talk to these ones at one gig, but that all the daisy chained 10 gig computers will be able to do that. Now, if you had a switch, that would be better. Any switch with an SFP plus, sorry about that. Any switch with an SFP plus uh, set of connectors on it will work for direct attached copper as far as I can tell, although I could be wrong about that one. But uh, here we go. So guys, right now, everything's pretty ghetto. I just have the two cards directly attached to each other so you can see it's working here 10 gigabit per second uh, if we go ahead and look at the status of the connection there it is 10 gigabit per second no internet access because like I said they're just direct attached but check this out okay so why do I need this a couple things number one here check this out uberfile.mov this is a five minute media file that is 36 gigs for video work, you want to work with uncompressed whenever you can, which means I want to capture uncompressed from the camera to my Blackmagic card. Then I want to work with that uncompressed footage, and that is very, very bandwidth intensive. We've tried to do it on gigabit. It's not even close. So check this out. I can play this file back over the network. No big deal. So there it's me talking about something. Let me just move this off to the side. I want you guys to see this network usage. You can see here that single gigabit would not have been anywhere near enough. This needs at peak, like if I'm scrubbing through the file, it's going to go up around 40% utilization on a 10 gigabit per second connection. All right, so the other thing about 10 gig is that you have to have the horses on the other side to take advantage of it. So my storage server here with the Eureka RAID card, whoops, yeah, you guys can't see that. With the Eureka RAID card, it has eight Seagate three terabyte drives in those bottom eight bays. So they are capable of producing up to 700 megabytes per second sustained reads and 500 megabytes per second sustained writes. That's way more than gigabit. Gigabit's only about 100 megabytes per second uh, reads and writes. So 
Right, so yeah, so the 10 gigabit per second connection wouldn't do me any good unless the storage on the other side was good enough to keep up with it. So here I'm gonna do a quick demo where I'm gonna take a few video files, let's say totaling about, eh, I don't know. Let's go, for, let's go for around five gigs here, guys. What do we got here? Yeah, there we go, 5.35 gigs. And we're going to copy these to the desktop here. Check this out. You guys are gonna love this. So you can see here it peaks around 1.2 gigabytes per second, which is freaking unreal. And then we start to be limited, not by the this guy on the other side here, because that was all like caching and memory and all that, but we're limited actually by the write speeds of the SSD in the rendering machine, which is here. So guys, what's exciting about this is that for about, so each card is about 280 bucks on NCIX for these Emulex cards, whether you get the direct attached copper ones or the Cat6, Cat6A ones, which means you can build a three computer gigabit, 10 gigabit daisy chain for like 750 bucks plus cables. So less than a thousand bucks. You can get these kinds of speeds. Now for a general consumer watching your Blu-ray rips, yeah, not that useful, but if you don't want to spend several thousand dollars on a switch, invest in, you know, $700 cards plus, you know, $800, $700 SFP plus fiber modules, blah, 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 and spend, you know, five to 10 grand setting up a 10 gigabit per second connection. If you have a use for one, whether it's for like prosumer video editing or whatever else, this is actually very attainable. Thanks for checking out this episode of Linus Tech Tips about my 10 gigabit per second connection experiment and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from yours truly i screwed up my outro whatever subscribe